Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take the function that we deployed in the last video and attach an HTTP endpoint to it. Now to do this we need to create a new API in API Gateway and link that up with our Lambda function. Now luckily we don't have to do this ourselves because the serverless framework will take care of this for us. So here I've opened up our project in Visual Studio Code and I'm going to open the serverless.yaml file. And here we've defined our function. So if I scroll down, here is my hello function. And now I want to attach an event to this function. Now remember the introduction video, Lambda functions are triggered by events. In this case, we want to add an HTTP event. So I'm going to add events to this section and I'm going to add an HTTP event. And I'm going to say that this HTTP event has a path and it also has a method. Now I can choose any path I want. So I'm going to use first endpoint. And I can also use any HTTP method that I want. So I'm going to use get right now, but I can also use post, put, or even delete. So let's save this file and let's deploy it and see what happens. So if I run SLS deploy in the terminal, this will package up my service, upload it to Amazon, and then update my stack through CloudFormation. And then once that the deployment is done, serverless will return a list of endpoints that it has deployed to API Gateway. So here I can see that it has deployed a get endpoint. And here is the name of that endpoint, it's first endpoint. Now notice that this URL right here, the execute API.eus.amazon.aws is generated by Amazon. This depends on the region that you deploy your function to and Amazon adds a unique ID uh, in this domain name here. Serverless then appends the stage of your service. So in this case, we're still working in the development environment. I have to find that right here in my serverless.yaml file. And then it attaches your path. Um, and so that I have defined here, first endpoint. So I can also create a path like this. I can say user slash information. That might be an endpoint that returns information about a user or whatever path that I like. Now let's test the endpoint that we have just deployed. Now because this is a get method, I don't need a tool like Postman to make a request. All I have to do is copy the URL and paste it in Chrome to see what the output is of this function. So I'm going to open up a new tab in Chrome here. I'm going to paste in the URL that serverless gave me. I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. It responds with a JSON object. Now you might notice that this is not the same response that we've got in the last video by triggering our function. So if I pull up the function here, we return a status code and a body, but in the browser, we don't see a status code. We just see message and input. We see these fields. Well, that's because serverless uses the Lambda proxy integration. And that is a special integration between Lambda and API Gateway. Basically, it allows you to control API Gateway from within your Lambda function. So in this example, the response object contains a part that is specifically for API Gateway and another part that is specifically for our end user. So here the status code is a variable that is used by API Gateway to know which status code it should return to the user. So in this case, we return a status code of 200, meaning that our request went just fine. And then the body variable is something that is passed to the user. And this should be a string, so we stringify the JSON object here. And that's what we see in Chrome. So this is the object we see in Chrome. We see the message and we see input. And input has a special value. It shows the event that the Lambda function received. So that's actually really interesting. Let me go back to Chrome. And as you can see, the event variable contains all the information about the event that triggered your Lambda function. So in this case, the Lambda function was triggered by API Gateway, so it contains which resource and which path called this function. It also contains things like which method was called, what are the headers that the user's browser uh, has presented us, what are the query strings, what are the path parameters, and so on and so on. 
It contains a lot of information and this will depend on the event that has triggered your function. So if you have a function that is triggered, for example, by uploads to an S3 bucket, then your event will look entirely different. Then you won't have a header section because there was no HTTP request involved. As you've seen, integrating Lambda with API Gateway is really, really simple. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can write a function that can accept parameters from the user. These can be delivered as post or get parameters. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.